It starts off, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make its boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear of it and be glad. Oh, magnify the Lord with me, and let us exalt his name together. I sought the Lord, and he heard me and delivered me from all my fears. They looked to him and were radiant, and their faces were not ashamed. This poor man cried out, and the Lord heard him and saved him out of all his troubles. The angel of the Lord encamps all around those who fear him and delivers them. You're probably asking yourselves, how do these scriptures apply to a lifestyle we live in today? Where, let's start off at work. We're overworked, we're underpaid, multitasking is a norm, but does it really, does it really work, this multitasking? Our schedules are running out of days, and there is never enough hours in the course of a day. Or am I just showing weakness, spinning out of control, going crazy, about to crash? That's when it's time to put the brakes on and get some spiritual food. And for me, Psalm 34, 1 through 7 works for me. Have you ever noticed that when we are praising the Lord, that we cannot focus on our problem? Think about it. Can you do both at the same time? Can you praise the Lord and worry at the same time? That's my key point. And the answer is no to that. As the peace begins to come in, as I begin to get grounded in the Word of God, taking in spiritual food, my mind is renewed. There are times where I'll sit down and write out the scriptures. No lie, I'll just sit down and write them several times in order to quiet my mind. And I have found it helps me to remember them as well. The Word gives me the power for right believing, changing my thoughts of defeat to thoughts of life. And the next scripture reading is Psalm, in Psalm 34. We're just going to go through 8 through 14. O oh, taste and see if the Lord is good. Blessed is the man who trusts in him. O oh, fear the Lord, you his saints. There is no want to those who fear him. The young lions lack and suffer hunger. But those who seek the Lord should not lack any good thing. Come, you children, listen to me. I would teach you the fear of the Lord. Who is the man who desires life and loves many days that he may see good? Keep your tongue from evil and your lips from speaking deceit. Depart from evil and do good. Seek peace and pursue it. For me, these scriptures are instructions on showing reverence to the Lord. And it also has a recipe in there for a longer life. And I can imagine that just when we keep our tongue from evil, it must have an effect on our body where it doesn't cause any disease. And seek peace and all, all that. Next will be, uh, the next reading is 34, 15 through 18. The eyes of the Lord are on the righteous, and his ears are open to their cry. The face of the Lord is against those who do evil, to cut off the remembrance of them from the earth. The righteous cry out, and the Lord hears and delivers them out of all their troubles. And this is the key verse right here. The Lord is near to those who have a broken heart, and <coughs> saves such as have a contrite spirit. <clears throat> Verse 18 is very important to me because of the words used here. And it's saying that the Lord is near to those with a broken heart. And he saves such as have a contrite spirit. And I looked up the definition of contrite. And it says, feeling or showing sorrow and remorse for a sin or shortcoming. Bottom line, repentance. I know for me, being in bondage with sin as I had shared a few weeks back, or when I went through a divorce and saying to myself, I could have tried harder. Feeling my shortcoming and having a repentant heart, I cried out to the Lord and he saved me and delivered me out of all my troubles. 
That's why for me, when I see or hear of someone hitting bottom and going through a hard time, I will, I will wonder, is the Lord calling that person? And if so, i got to turn the page. <laughs> and if so, will, will that person answer that call? Is the person going to surrender and cry out to the Lord Jesus with a repentant heart? There's a lot. There's a lot to say about that um, contrite spirit. It's uh, we see a lot of that going on today. A lot of hard times, and we know the enemy striking us everywhere. The next scripture reading is Psalm 34, 19 through 21. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivers him out of them all. He guards all his bones; not one of them is broken. Evil shall slay the wicked. And those who hate the righteous shall be condemned. <clears throat> There's a lot in these three verses, but I'll sum it up by saying that even though we are saved by grace of Jesus, we still have our shared troubles. But we know that we are not alone. For greater is he who is in us than he who is in the world. Through our troubles, our faith will be challenged, but yet our faith will always be sharpened and strengthened in those challenges. And finally, the last verse is Psalm 22. The Lord redeems the soul of his servants, and none of those who trust in him shall be condemned. This verse is not part of the Hebrew alphabet, but it does summarize Psalm 34 by giving praise to the Lord who <clears throat> saves those who put their faith in him. And that's when we cry out to him and ask for his help. And there's one verse that uh, stuck in my mind, and that's Isaiah 26, verse 3, is where I'm going to end. And it goes this way. You will keep him in perfect peace, whose mind is stayed on you, because he trusts in you. And that's my whole theme right there. When we stay, keep our focus on the Lord, how can we worry and, um, when we focus on the Lord? We can't do both at the same time. And that's, that's the end.